I would say, how do you, um, once again, thank you, and how do you define the cannabis industry in Oakland? The cannabis industry in Oakland, I would say, is kind of in an uphill battle. Um, it's kind of a, a five foot four, kind of two steps or sometimes 10 step back. Um, right now, the taxes are at a point to where they're so excessive that not only is it um, uh, an, a really tough burden for companies, but the consumer is also hit. And because cannabis, especially California cannabis, Bay Area cannabis, has been around you know, 96, from 1996 and even before then, there were already these kind of formed relationships between the providers and then for the, um, the consumers. So when the taxes were so high, the consumers couldn't participate in dispensaries like they once had. And the um, providers, you know, the barrier of entry was so high, they didn't, you know, have the financial um, ability to move forward or the, you know, regulations were so um, challenging that they weren't able to get a building or, you know, there was just so many challenges that there's so much more potential. And it's a little bit disappointing, the fact that for a city that is so kind of set on creating a um, thriving cannabis economy that they haven't recognized the fact that maybe having the highest city tax in the entire state isn't really ideal. Or um, having taxes or the barrier of entry being so high that investors and funders don't want to um, support businesses in Oakland, they want them to go to other cities because it's not a, a sound business decision. So there's a lot of challenges, but um, you know, I think ultimately the people who are very active in the cannabis community are so determined to uphold compassion and to ensure that the people who um, were shut out of the um, industry initially still have an opportunity to get back in and to thrive. So work in progress. And what motivated you to get into the cannabis industry? Um, compassion definitely was at the forefront. Um, myself personally, I've been a consumer since I was 15. And so I had used it for anxiety. Um, it was something that I had found to once I moved from Ohio and got to California and was able to, you know, have an, um, a selection at a dispensary that was more catered to what my needs were. Um, you know, being in the Midwest, I got what, what was available. So there were things that would be very effective for my anxiety, but then there would be things that wouldn't be as effective for my anxiety. And at the time, I didn't, wasn't able to make that distinction as to why. So um, when I came out here and was really exposed to all the varieties and went to Oaksterdam, you know, I really was able to see its impact as a medicine and to recognize its value for pretty much people of, of all, you know, types of the spectrum, seniors, um, those with, you know, um, ailments, uh, disabilities, those who are even younger children, you know, with certain um, medicines have benefited. Um, so, you know, the fact that it's able to not only on a medicinal level help people, but its ability to bring people together of all kinds, um, that's something that I think is really special that you don't see in other traditional uh, medicines. So. And um, what, 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 what is the impact that Magnolia has on Oakland? Our, like, who is Magnolia in Oakland? Who do you guys define yourselves as? For us, it's really important to be a, a platform for our neighborhood and our community. Um, we have to recognize that in order to ensure that we are a positive addition to the neighborhood, that we are getting involved, that we really take an active role, that people know our names. It's you know, it's important for, you know, a, a, a business to have a kind of person behind it. It's not just, oh, the dispensary down the street. It's, I know these people, they are active in the community, they care. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm co-chair of the Neighborhood Crime Prevention Council, um, which for me has been something that has made a huge impact on me, being able to work alongside longtime activists, mother, women, um, you know, who just have really showed a lot of perseverance and really have um, made activism or giving back to community their, um, their, their life goal. So, um, you know, for me, it's kind of a mutually beneficial thing. How can we use our, our business as a platform 
And like I tell people, if you think of a dispensary as just a, a retail business, you're selling yourself in your community short. Um, you know, even in the most basic level, we do um, donation jars in lieu of tip jars because we're a union dispensary. So we want to make sure, you know, everything's kind of, you know, equal. But the tip jars allow for us to be able to um, allow our members to help us support other local businesses, different um, things that we do throughout the year. We donate to um, a safe place around um, the holidays, which is the domestic violence shelter in Oakland. And we do a school supply drive every year. And we work with uh, most recently the Willow Project, which um, their goal is to provide resources, clothing, um, toiletries to those without um, kind of stable housing. So, um, you know, and we also, when we have some of our members or some of our staff members who their family has, you know, they've had losses or they've had, you know, um, extraordinary, you know, kind of um, circumstances, you know, it allows us to kind of be able to reach out to those right within our, within our network. Um, so, and we also, uh, you know, it's, I always tell people, it's very important to remember that when you come to a dispensary and you see all of the wonderful choices, that you also do remember that there are people sitting in prison away from their families for nonviolent cannabis offenses and drug offenses in general. And um, that will, you know, businesses, it's, it's good for businesses to be able to thrive. It's also important that those, you know, people have the opportunity to um, be released, be brought home with their families. And if they're interested to have an opportunity to thrive in the industry that they were once um, criminalized for. So. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Again, my very last question is, um, how has COVID-19 affected Magnolia and the cannabis industry in Oakland? So um, the good thing about the cannabis industry, um, particularly in California, is um, we do have an ability to adapt, adapt and to be flexible. So, um, you know, obviously COVID-19 has brought, you know, unforeseen challenges that we never really thought that we would have to do. Um, and so a lot of it was having to act quickly and to kind of think ahead of things because we saw how rapidly it was um, kind of uh, progressing from even hour to hour. So kind of our first, when we, we kind of got wind like that there might be, you know, in three or four weeks, some, some closures, but we were told, you know, Hey, it was malls and um, like uh, sporting events and stuff like that, that were kind of closed first. So then we were kind of trying to think ahead of like, all right, what, what are we going to have to do? So we, we kind of saw that, all right, let's, let's close the dab bar um, because, you know, consumption and not being able to really adapt to measures to keep people safe because we, we didn't know yet. So we just didn't want to have people come in who are potentially ill, dabbing and coughing and, you know, who, who knows what. So, um, and then obviously we had to, you know, kind of, keep getting progressively um, kind of stricter and adapting. And our boss, um, Debbie Goldsberry, she's been um, in the industry for 30 plus years. She's really an OG. Um, and she has really fought for um, uh, the end of cannabis prohibition for pretty much her whole life. So she is really, really good about kind of being prepared and being super thorough and taking each and every measure and being as um, kind of uh, thoughtful as positive. So her leadership really kind of allowed for us to be kind of ahead of it. And, you know, we were, we were grateful that, you know, we were kind of able to get things in place before even, you know, the county started requiring 